We are I. A historical Greek philosopher once said, The brave man is not only he who conquers his enemies, but he who conquers his pleasures as well. Like, what an interesting thought process. You know, a brave man can conquer his enemies. It's like, well, like, what does this really mean? What does this really mean to you? I guess, more importantly, for because of this conversation being unilateral, like, what does this mean to me? Like, conquering your enemies, like, I don't... I don't think that he meant, and I don't think what it means is conquering them by way is like stifling them is more by way of finding a way to, to love them and accept them. You know, because I have listened to this podcast with this divorce lawyer and I've never really heard anybody explain something like this before, you know, but the one thing he said that just dumbfounds him with, with co-parents is that you can't look at your child and realize that you love them so much more than you hate the other person that you can't treat that other person with respect. And it really fucking blew me away. Like it really took me back. Because when you really look at this and you apply this principle to everything in life, not just that situation, not just what this, you know, Greek philosopher was talking about. You know, but when you apply that to is simply is that I love my life more than what the stress of life causes, no matter what that stress may be or who may bring that stress into life. But I just it generally and enthusiastically love my life more than any of the shit that happens in life, which makes me have a totally different attitude and a totally different outlook on, on everything that crosses your path. Because how can it not? How can you look at that and say that I actually hate my life so much that I'm going to allow all these things to infect me, to infest my mind and infest my heart and to be able to infest my soul. That's how much I hate life because if you actually love life, it's not going to happen. The same way that this gentleman, you know, described that when you look at this other person that you may despise either righteously or not, but when you look at them that you can't see your kids and be like, you know what, I love them so much more than I hate you. You know, and this isn't even concurrent to like what everybody, you know, thinks in this situation. I and mean, I use, just use it as an example because I just happened to finish listening to that podcast. But again, I immediately started deploying this thought process into other parts and components of my life that's like, yeah, you know, you may be tired today. You may be tired. You might be really fucking tired. It might be really hard to do what you're doing. But do you love what you're about to do more than that tired feeling? Or, you know, like when you want to be a, a grumpy asshole because you're tired, do you, do you love life more than what you want to be that tired, grumpy asshole? You know, do you love your body more than the guilty pleasure of eating fucking pizza and drinking Slurpees and, you know, eating chocolate bars and shit. Do you? Because that's the other side of that Greek philosopher. That's, you know, what he's saying is that not only are you conquering your enemies, but you're conquering your pleasures too. Because you realize that this is the double-edged sword. You know, this is where you can't have your cake and eat it too. This is where you find that balance. And when you find that balance, you're left with that harmonious feeling in the middle. Being like, yeah, I really do. I really do enjoy this thing so much more than these things that I don't enjoy. So I'm not going to allow those things I don't enjoy to be able to overshadow and cloud my way of thinking or the emotions that go through my mind, my heart, my body, my soul. Because that does happen. You know, when you look at this thing called, you know, performance, and this is where an avenue that I get into all the time is that yeah, I might be tired. I may not want to do this. Like this morning, I couldn't sleep all night. I drank a cup of coffee uh, way later in the afternoon than what I normally do. On top of that, I had, you know, a coffee, you know, in the mid morning, which I never do either. And I ate like shit. 
Not that I ate shitty food. I ate shitty quality meat. And I hate that. You know, I was at a, I was at a barbecue event and they had all beef hot dogs, which to me is just fucking gross shit. You know, but, you know, hungry. You know, so I'm not just going to eat like one. Of course, I had to eat like five because I had to get some kind of sense of being full. And all I had was, you know, like a chicken breast before that. You know, and this is just a chicken breast off a of roast chicken, so salty as shit. You know, and I look at like all of these things. I could have just laid in bed this morning and said, you know, I'm not going to do this. I couldn't sleep all night. My alarm went off at 3.15. I couldn't do 3.15. I laid there just feeling so guilty until I finally just got out of bed. I'm like, I'm going to go do it. I only ran a mile and a half on the treadmill, and then I sat in the sauna and I was just like, you know, I'm glad I came and did this. And then I'm like, I'm going to go in the ice bath right now. And I'm not going to sit in it. I'm just going to repeatedly dunk my head under the water, my whole body. And I'm just going to keep doing that and doing that and doing that and doing that until I just get that exhilarated feeling that I know that I came here. I know that's going to change my day. And it did. Because so I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Just <gasps> bend back under. <sighs> Come out. <sighs> back under. And just keep repeatedly doing it and doing it and doing it and doing it. And then I went and sat in the sauna for like 15, 20 minutes. Kind of warmed up a little bit, but didn't have time to sit there all day. Or just, I guess, until I felt a little bit warm. But I could have, but what I, I love doing it so much more than what that feeling of, you know, just stay in bed and just marinate in the shit that you've created. Because that's what it is. You knew when you drank that coffee, you shouldn't have done it. You knew it was going to keep you up at night. You knew it. You know, like, could you have ate, like, you know, maybe one or two of those, like, big, juicy, jumbo, all beef hot dog things instead of having, like, five? It's like, I could have. There's no, there's no problem with being hungry. You had something in your stomach. Like, you didn't need to eat that many. You didn't need to eat, like, the probably 50 grams of 70% dark chocolate, you know, that you ate, too, just because you were feeling a little peckish still. You didn't need to do any of that. But if you are going to do that, I think it's more important, again, that you realize that you love everything else more than stewing in that shit. Because that's what happened this morning. That's what I did. And then ever since that this morning... I just wanted to conquer another thing off my list and another and another and another and just keep on going and going and going and going because that is what I like. I like solving problems. I like fixing things. I like, you know, creating. And laying in bed this morning, stewing in that shit would have done none of that. And then ironically, I come across this quote from this, you know, ancient Greek philosopher, which directly, you know, correlates back into this podcast that I listened to with this divorce lawyer. But I just, I realized that you have that, that opportunity and you can apply that theory to so many avenues in life. When you look at it, you're like, do I love this more? It's like even the mediocrity of working a shitty job that you don't want to be at. It's like, do I love all the other aspects? Do I love the other components of life more than what I hate the mediocrity of this job? You know, when you when you look at all these situations, traffic, you know, do I love what I'm going home to or do I love what I just came from doing or do I love what I'm going to do more than what I hate sitting in this traffic so it's not as bad. And subsequently, I realized that I deploy this theory in my life in so many different areas that I didn't even realize, you know, when I'm doing these big travel stints and I have to drive and it's like, you know, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 hours of driving. And I'm like, fuck, man. I'm like, I remember a point in time when I used to hate drive. Just the thought of driving more than an hour or two is just like clawing my eyes out. But I realize that now it's not that I like driving. It's just what is on the other end of that driving. And when I come back from that driving, from that trip, I love that more. So I don't hate the trip as much. See, I don't hate it at all because I have this great perspective to be able to leverage. So I deploy that to you. I, I question, I challenge you. What are you really willing to do here? What are you willing to really do with that information? Like, do you love the rest of it more than what you hate that's right in front of you? At that moment when you realize that what you're doing you do not like. Or do you love, you know, something so much that you're willing to be able to pull yourself out of like what I did in bed this morning when you're tired after like three hours of sleep? You're willing to get up and go do it anyway. Because you know that you love it so much more than 
laying and stewing in the filth of yourself. Are you willing? So, that's a simple question with a complex answer. Are you willing?